Today we are going to talk about the top five things keeping you from shredding. Welcome to Music with Marky. So if you've been looking around YouTube, Instagram, wherever, checking out guitar players, obviously you've seen all kinds of over-the-top guitar histrionics and shreddy kind of music like what I threw in the beginning of the video there. And certainly that's not all of what music is about. Melody and feeling and groove are so important and no one's going to care about uh, what kind of shreddy guitar playing you do if it's in the context of something no one wants to listen to. But as a guitar player, most of us reach a point where we want to learn things that are technical. Uh, sometimes we have a feeling that we want to express that actually is best expressed through a fast passage. It's like a release of frustration. Uh, and we, there's things we want to play that you hit a roadblock and you're unable to play. And what I want to talk to you about today is on the extreme end of that, the guitar shredder type of thing, the five things that are probably keeping you from reaching those goals and being able to play those things and how we can correct them. So thing number one is all about how you practice, the methodology you put into place to reach or to get from point A to point B to point Z with some of this stuff. And that's all about organizing your practice sessions. A lot of times we see a passage we want to learn, see something in a song, you try to play it up to speed, you can't. Maybe you try to play it a little bit slower and a little bit faster each time, but you're not organized about how you're doing it. This is all about practicing with a metronome, or better yet, with a drum loop or a, a drum machine, something that has some groove to it so that when you're playing along with it, um, you're getting used to playing with drums and playing with kind of a groove and playing the passages, not just to a very sterile type of click. You can find drum loops free online. I use a piece of software called Easy Drummer that I like to use to write music with too. And I'll just set up like a four measure loop and jam along with something. So the most important part of the process is that you're keeping track of this on paper. So I do this, I have notebooks and notebooks full of paper of things I've worked on over the years. I'm gonna grab one here. This is one of my practice sheets. And you'll see I've got the stuff written out in tab and notation and below it, you see a bunch of scratched off numbers over here. And that's me keeping track of what tempo I'm playing that at at that day or in that practice session. So I've got something, let's take something simple like a, a basic picking pattern. Something like this that I worked on many years ago. And whatever tempo I can play it cleanly and comfortably at when I first started working on it, I would write at the bottom of the sheet, whether it be eighth notes, quarter notes, sixteenth notes. Usually it's eighth notes when you start. So if you have a click and I'm going one and two and which is eighth notes, one and two and three and four and one and something like that, 100 beats per minute, 110 beats per minute, whatever it is, I write it down on the sheet. And then my next practice session, later that day, the next day, whatever, I start there or slightly below there, and I try to get, if I was at 110, I try to get to 112, 114, 116, whatever. And I write that down, and I'm organized about it. I keep track, so I'm climbing the rungs of a ladder or going up the stairs. And, you know, you can't reach the top of the ladder if you can't see the next rungs. You have to do it a bit at a time if you want to get there. So be organized. Keep notes. Have notebooks full of stuff years from now where you've played passages that you're excited that you accomplished and you have that library of stuff you can add to your guitar player's tool belt. Let's look at thing number two now. This next thing I've talked about in a couple of my videos, and it's probably the most important piece of knowledge I can impart onto you about practicing in general, and that is that you have to think about your practice sessions as a series of sprints rather than as a marathon. If you really want to progress quickly and form those neural pathways and get the muscle memory down, and I'm no doctor, I don't even know what I'm talking about, but I know that you learn things quicker, not just on guitar, but in a number of different areas of life when you work on it in bursts. And the same thing is going to be true of practicing your shred techniques on guitar. And so when I have one of those sheets open and I'm practicing, I'm not doing the thing where you practice like two hours in a row, just working on it and working on it and actually getting diminished returns because I think I'm working hard and it should work for me, but I'm just kind of working dumb. You need to work smart and hard. So when you're practicing these things, practice, practice with your click and your drum beat and do something like the riff. And let me show you kind of what I do here.
so you see there, I practice the riff just for a little bit to the click, to the speed. And then I go and I play some other random stuff and I jam a little bit. And this is helping me write music too. I get song ideas in the middle of practice sessions like this. And I'll do this back and forth kind of thing three or four times before I raise the click up. Uh, and then I'll do the whole thing when I reach whatever top speed I'm comfortable at. I'll do that for maybe no more than 15 minutes at a time. And, you know, if your day allows for it, if you can do this three or four times a day in little 15 minute intervals, you're going to learn so much faster than if you tried to do all this for that same, whatever those 15 minutes added up to, an hour or 45 minutes, all straight. The sprints are much better for your learning process. Let's look at thing number three. Thing number three comes up for some people. This is more of a beginner tip, but may be affecting you. And that is about how you hold the pick. There's two things you want to keep in mind if you're going to play some shred guitar when you're holding the pick. And one is that you want to have as little pick as showing as possible. You want just a tiny bit of pick sticking out from beneath your thumb. And the second thing is the angle at which you attack the strings. A lot of people are looking to be precise and think they need to attack the strings flatly. But when you're trying to play quickly, you're actually going to get all kinds of caught up if you have your strings and the pick aligned exactly. You try to pick fast that way, it's, it's a mess. You have to start to angle the pick somewhere towards 45 degrees. So I'm going to start turning the pick that way as if I was going towards playing sideways. And now when you go to pick, it kind of rolls over the string, but you still get a little bit of the attack of the point. And that's how you get to your shreddy speeds with your right hand or your left hand, if you're a lefty player, your picking hand accurately. Okay, and this fourth thing now is something I've talked about in some other videos, and I'll link it up here about portable licks. And just briefly what I'm talking about here is practicing things that are usable in multiple places in multiple ways. If you're just learning a big long run of a scale from a song, that's cool and everything, but you're going to learn it in a specific key and it's going to be hard to transpose. And you're not really building a library of things you can do when you're improvising and writing your own music. So you want to work on things that have repeatable techniques that you can use all over the place. And I'll just give you a quick example here. A shreddy kind of thing like this simple pull off technique where I play a note on the E string, pull off to a note, with, start with an upstroke, so it's an upstroke, and then a downstroke on the next string, then an upstroke back to the E string. It's a simple, basic 80s shredder type of thing like that. That kind of technique, if you spend time learning on that, you're going to get more mileage out of it, because I can play that same idea in any key, in any kind of uh, series of notes. So you want to take patterns like that that are easily repeatable, create things that are usable in multiple places. Now, finally, thing number five, this is it. It's the big one. Everybody breaks this one. And what I'm going to tell you here, you're not going to like, but what you have to do to prevent yourself from not shredding, stop drinking coffee. What? I told you not to put the sea people in your coffee. Wait, what am I talking about? Nah, nah you don't got to stop coffee, but I'm trying to make a point here is that you have to let go of the nervous energy when you try to play fast. The tendency that everybody has when they start off is to tense up, and I still even catch myself doing it, especially in the right hand, tensing up of the forearm, and even in the left hand, tensing up. You have to be loose and relaxed as heck when you're trying to play anything shreddy. I mean, could you imagine trying to run fast if you were like clenching up all of your leg muscles? You would just fall down and smash your chin on the ground. <laughs> When you're working with that tempo machine and you're working on these licks, focus on staying loose. And I'm going to give you a little kind of bonus exercise here. And this exercise I teach to even my beginning students. It's an exercise that's not musical at all. It's just chromatics. But you're going to focus on keeping the pick held correctly, not too much sticking out. Play on the angle. Keep your forearm loose. Keep your left hand as loose as you can. And you're just going to play on the first string. The fourth fret, start with the down stroke. First fret, third fret. First fret, second fret, first fret, and it's all alternate picking. And then you go up a fret. And you're going to work this with a metronome and get to the point where you're playing it quickly without tensing up. It's all about remaining loose. And you're going to find that, especially in the right hand, the amount of looseness that you need will surprise you 
for being able to play accurately and quickly, you're almost going to be barely holding on to the pick. And you will start to be able to apply that to everything else you're playing and have that just general relaxed feeling across both hands and arms that allows you to play the shred parts you want to play. So there they are, my top five reasons you may not be shredding yet and how you correct them. I hope you find these tips useful and they help you on your journey towards being the next YouTube or Instagram crazy shredder. And hopefully you're writing some good music too, because like I say at the end of every video, keep making great music. Hey friends, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. It makes the whole world better.